So in one of the previous videos, we've already talked about four different factors that can affect the rate of transpiration. We talked about light, temperature, humidity, and wind. And these are all variables that you can easily design an experiment around and you can make it very simple or you can make it relatively complex and actually measure true uh, rates and come up with incredible new novel ways to measure some of these things. But one of the most standard ways is to use a device that looks like this. It's called a potometer and you probably have seen something like this in school or in your classroom or you could even you know, make a simple version of these with some tubing and some test tubes or something like that. So the rate of transpiration is hard to measure directly. And remember that transpiration is the movement of water, the inevitably sad movement of water through the plants because there are holes in the leaves that need to allow gas to come in for photosynthesis. So the water ends up leaving and the water can move up. Now, if you have this kind of, uh, entire kind of blocked off stream of water with no air bubbles trapped in there, the water will continuously move up as it evaporates from the leaves. That's the basis of this entire thing. And if you need to move the bubble back around in some potometers, there's a little reservoir here that you can open up to move a bubble around. You could just use the end of the water here and actually use that and measure the movement of that. Or you can introduce a bubble into it and then measure the movement of the bubble. It doesn't matter. There are many different ways that you can do this, but this is one of the standard methods that you should understand how to use. It's called a potometer. So skip to the ending of the movie and you end up with the results that are already here, but that's okay. If you're doing a transpiration experiment, you're probably already sure or you know what the expected results are supposed to be. So it might not be very exciting or rewarding, but one of the things, one of the ways that science is approached is to make sure that we are double checking and constantly uh, reconfirming different types of hypotheses and theories that are out there. And so when you get your results and they don't match up, well, maybe you figured out something new or maybe it's time to evaluate your actual approach. But nevertheless, when you're done and, you, and you've compiled your results, you need to compare them with the scientific literature. It's standard practice for helping to keep everybody honest in science. So I'm not going to go into depth right now about the explanation of why it is that transpiration rate will increase when temperature increases. You can see that in the other video. I've gone into that in quite a bit of detail. Also, why transpiration rate would decrease when humidity increases. This is an interesting one. Uh, people, you kind of have to think deeply about this. See if you can figure that out and then go look at the other video if you need to. And also for wind speed, why transpiration rate would increase for wind speed as wind speed increases and why it would eventually start to drop. Try to come up with an explanation for some of those as well too. So here's a little bit of detail about how you might go about setting up an experiment like this. So we talked about using a potometer. Uh, the classic way to set up any type of experiment is to have one independent variable that you were changing, one dependent variable that you're going to be measuring, and then every other variable would be kept constant. So for example, if you are investigating temperature, then you would make sure that light, humidity, wind, and any other factors that could possibly mess with the transpiration rate, that those would all actually be kept constant. So temperature, you can use a heat lamp uh, to vary the temperature and an infrared thermometer to actually measure the temperature. Um, one thing you have to be careful about, especially when using light, and I'm sure I've mentioned this in other videos as well too, is that if you're trying to measure light intensity, be careful that your light source is not actually giving off heat because that could be changing the temperature as well too. Or if you are using a light source that does give off heat, what are you actually doing to prevent the heat from reaching the actual uh, leaves when you're testing and testing and measuring transpiration rates. So that's one, one approach for there. This is a not very cool sounding way to control humidity, but you can basically shove a leaf inside a bag to keep the humidity relatively constant. You can spray it with water to increase the humidity, humidity in there, or you can use one of those little bags that you find in all kinds of foods. Uh, what types of foods have I been eating recently that have these in there? 
chips. I don't think chips really have them. They're more in like dried jerky type things. They're basically little desiccant bags. Uh, they have silica gel in there and they actually absorb the excess water that's in there. So you could do that. And you could even use something called a hygrometer to actually measure the humidity and get some quantitative readings and measurements from that as well too. So there's all kinds of different ways to investigate even one specific variable so like i said you can make it a very simple experiment or you can raise the complexity so don't worry that this might sound like a relatively simple experiment you can raise the complexity by changing your approach the quality of the data that you're trying to collect uh, really focusing on precise repeat measurements and making sure that your measurements are as accurate or as close to the real values as possible as well too so Good luck with that.